Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be learning the theory behind the equilibrium of particles, and we will finish off the video with a couple of example problems to test our understanding. In most instances, structures in civil engineering are designed under equilibrium conditions. That is, structures are designed such that no accelerations occur, and therefore the structure remains at rest. Therefore, it is important for us to understand the concept of equilibrium and how we can apply it to civil engineering. And for this, we will start off by analysing equilibrium of particles. In civil engineering, a particle is defined as a body with negligible dimensions but significant mass, and when in equilibrium, the resultant of all forces applied to the particle will be equal to zero. As we saw in the video introducing structural analysis, forces can be represented as vectors, and so, the resultant of a set of forces can be represented by the sum of all vectors of the forces. We can sum a set of vectors geometrically and analytically, so to introduce the idea, we will start off by looking at the geometrical computation. In this diagram, we have two vectors, A and B. Note that the bold font is denoting the fact that they are vector quantities, i.e. they have magnitude and direction. To sum the two vectors, we place them head to tail and draw the vector from the free tail to the free head. So we get the vector denoted A plus B that looks like this. This graphical method of summing vectors is intuitive, but lacks accuracy when compared to analytical approaches. Analytical methods make use of coordinate systems to denote the components of the vectors. For example, using the x and y coordinate directions in the diagram, the head of vector A has an x-coordinate of 3 and a y-coordinate of 5. The tail of vector A is at the point 0, 0, and so the magnitude of vector x can be represented by subtracting the position of the tail from the position of the head, resulting in a magnitude of 3 in the x-direction and 5 in the y-direction. The head of vector B, however, is located at point 7, 5, and the tail is at the point 0, 7. Therefore, subtracting the position of the tail from the position of the head results in a magnitude of 7 in the x-direction and negative 2 in the y-direction. Therefore, to get the resulting vector, we sum the magnitudes of vector A and B. Summing the magnitude in the x-direction first, we have 3 plus 7, so the resultant magnitude in the x-direction is equal to 10. And then doing the same for the y-direction, we have 5 plus negative 2 resulting in a magnitude in the y-direction of 3. As we said at the beginning, for a body to be in equilibrium, all forces applied to the particle must be equal to 0, and therefore, the vectorial sum of all forces applied must be equal to 0. Let's have a look at an example problem then, to apply what we have just learnt. We will start off with an example where we have to compute the resultant force of two separate forces. The diagram shows a vertical force of 5 kN and a horizontal force of 3 kN. Note that we are taking the x and y coordinate directions to be positive, so our forces are positive. Now we have to compute the resultant of these two forces. Analytically, we can compute the resultant by summing the horizontal magnitudes and then the vertical magnitudes. So, the horizontal component of the resultant is equal to 0 plus 3 kilonewtons, which equals 3 kilonewtons, and then the vertical component of the resultant is equal to 5 kilonewtons plus 0, which equals 5 kilonewtons. We can now use this to calculate the magnitude of the resultant force. Geometrically, the steps we have just taken looks like this, where the tail of the 3 kilonewton force is placed on the head of the 5 kilonewton force resulting in a force from the open tail to the open head, as we can see here. To calculate the resultant, we use Pythagoras' theorem, where the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle is equal to the square root of the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared. Therefore, for us, the resultant of these two forces is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared, which equals 5.831 kilonewtons. For the next example, we have a lantern that is suspended by two cables, A and B, and the lantern weighs 2 kilonewtons. Considering the dimension shown in the diagram, and that the lantern is in equilibrium, calculate the force in each cable. 
So here we have two cables that are attached to walls at the same height and a lantern is hanging in equilibrium half a meter below this level. The cables are attached to the lantern two meters away from the left hand wall and four meters away from the right hand wall and we will be taking the x and y direction to be positive for this example. We will start off by drawing our forces onto the diagram and denoting them FA and FB respectively, not forgetting to include the weight of the lantern. It doesn't matter which way we draw our cable forces onto the diagram, and for example, in this case as we will see, with the arrow pointing upwards, FA will result to be positive. However, if we had started by switching the arrow such that it was facing downwards, FA would just result to be negative. So you can see that we will get the same correct result regardless of how we draw our force arrows onto the diagram. Note that the force arrows must be in line with the cable though. We will then denote the angles between the cables and the horizontal plane and we will call these alpha and beta, writing them in on the diagram for visualization. We have done this as it will allow us to decompose the forces in the cables into horizontal and vertical components, which will be required for solving the problem. Looking at the left hand cable first of all, we know the length of the opposite side and the adjacent side to the angle alpha. So using trigonometry, we can calculate that alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of 0.5 divided by 2, which equals 14.04 degrees to two decimal places. This is the same case for the angle beta. So therefore, beta is equal to the inverse tan of 0.5 divided by 4 which is equal to 7.13 degrees to two decimal places. With these angles, we can now decompose the forces in the cables into their horizontal and vertical components. Taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the horizontal component of the force in cable A is equal to negative Fa times cosine alpha, and the horizontal component of the force in cable B is equal to Fb times cosine beta. Doing the same for the vertical components, taking the y-coordinate direction to be positive, the vertical component of the force in cable A is equal to Fa times sine alpha, and the vertical component of the force in cable B is equal to Fb times sine beta. Since the lantern is in equilibrium, we know that the sum of all horizontal and vertical components must be zero. So, we can write that the sum of the horizontal force components is equal to negative Fa times cosine alpha plus Fb times cosine beta, which equals zero. And then we can write that the sum of the vertical force components is equal to Fa times sine alpha plus Fb times sine beta minus our lantern weight of two kilonewtons, which equals zero. Now we can see that we have a set of simultaneous equations. Firstly, rearranging the equations for the horizontal components by adding Fa cosine alpha and then dividing cosine beta from both sides, we get that Fb is equal to Fa times cosine alpha over cosine beta, and we will star this for later. Then, substituting this into our equation for the vertical components, we get Fa sine alpha plus Fa cosine alpha divided by cosine beta times sine beta minus 2 is equal to 0. Rearranging for Fa and substituting in our values for alpha and beta, we get Fa is equal to 2 divided by 0.364, and therefore Fa is equal to 5.5 kilonewtons. I sped through a lot of that working as it was just simple rearranging and substitution, but you're welcome to pause the video here to take a closer look at what I did to get this solution. Now we can substitute our value for Fa into our starred equation from before. Therefore, Fb is equal to 5.5 times cosine alpha divided by cosine beta, which equals 5.377 kilonewtons. Therefore, we can conclude that the force in cable A has a magnitude of 5.5 kilonewtons and is acting along the cable towards the left hand wall and the force in cable B is equal to 5.377 kilonewtons and is acting along the cable towards the right hand wall. So I hope now that we have worked through these two example problems, you have a good understanding of calculating the resultant force from a set of forces and how we can calculate forces applied to a particle in equilibrium. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, 
please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.